so here's my door where the children come in. And I feel like it's important to have something right by the door that, that like welcomes the kids when they come in, makes them feel like cozy and like home. So let's just take a peek out here. Oh, you can see. Hello, Miss Muniz. I'm filming a video. Hi. There's Miss Muniz. She's my pal. Hey. You ready for vacation? I'm ready for vacation, but not yet. I'm telling you, hands up. Well, you go get them. I'm being successful. Have a lovely day, Miss Muniz. I will Ms. win Muniz. the war. You will win the war. That's not what this video is about. Oh boy, I just locked myself out. Let's uh, go back inside, shall we? Okay, so, as you can see, there's paper chains everywhere. But not just any ordinary paper chains that would be wasteful of paper. These paper chains are actually made out of pages from the yearbook that my club and I use during the editing process. So it's metaphorically like a symbol of all of our hard work and also it gives the other kids in the school a really neat sneak peek of the yearbook without revealing too much so that's what all the paper chains are about usually i have some kind of huge collage of something drawn all over this board something collaborative with the kids but for today i had to erase the board because tomorrow is spring break so i just posted my class schedule up here for the shortened classes. I just finished first period, so I just put theirs behind this paper here. So as each class comes in, I will put away another piece of construction paper. My regular schedule, I keep back here, so everyone can see. That way, no one ever has to ask, hey, what time is this class over? Because that implies that, you know, they wanna get out of here, and that's not cool. This is my favorite quote. I always keep this on my door. I actually made this back when I was teaching literacy just to try to encourage my kids to be more confident in their writing and their reading. Everyone's a genius. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. This fish don't climb trees. Oh, it looks like I have a visitor. Who could it be? Let's see. Hello, friend. I'm filming right now. Oh, you have gum in your mouth? Can I borrow a pair of headphones? Can you please borrow a pair of headphones? May I please borrow a pair of headphones? Say hi to the world. Hello, world. Who are, who are you? Dominic. Okay, Dominic. You may enter. Okay. So this is Dominic. He's awesome. He needs to borrow a pair of headphones. So he knows that he can count on Miss Salemi for helping him out. Yes. So just make sure I get those back by the end of the day, okay? Alright. Alright, bye, Dominic. Bye. All right, so moving along. Over here in the back section of the classroom is where I keep all of my robotics stuff, all of my robot kits and all of the pieces for building robots and all the Legos too. I'll get to the Legos next. So we have EV3 robot kits, which is centered around the main EV3 robot brick, which is the part that you program and all of the pieces that are also made by Lego and compatible with Legos can be used to build different kinds of robots. Here's one that I just started tinkering with. The last project that we did was the uh, robot pinball machine, which I've posted several videos about previously. But, you know, like literal vlogs of like day by day, like, you know, what's going on with the project, you know, like as a neat scaffolding thing, but that was last marking period. So we're on to new things. I think I'm gonna try to build a robot dog again. All of my robotics pieces I have organized in containers that I've recycled from other things. This used to be a peanut butter jar, and now it contains small wheels and tires, and I covered it in stickers just to make it cute, because, you know, I like cute things. And here, wheels, gears, and tires, so I like keeping everything very organized. And also, there's a nice little message I'm trying to send my kids about recycling. Rather than creating more plastic waste, we're reusing these awesome containers as um, places to organize all of our pieces. You may also notice, or if you have EV3 kits in your classroom, you probably don't 
you know, have things organized like this. You might, you know, just keep all of the pieces per individual kit in the kits so that the kids have X number of this kind of piece, X number of that kind of piece. But I separate the pieces just to allow the kids, you know, more freedom in their engineering. That's kind of the fun part. So after we go through the basic build, learn how the sensors work, etc., they can have the freedom to kind of like explore and play around with different designs or different ideas that they might have for different kinds of robots. Here's my small axles. This used to be a ring box, a jewelry box. Jewelry boxes are great for like recycling. If you need like a little box to store little pieces, these are great. Here's another jewelry box. And everything is labeled so you know where everything is. Oh, I need a beige connector peg. It's in this box. These are great too. These little um, cottage cheese containers with the lids. These are perfect for all these little kinds of pieces. Now over here, I have my Legos, which we just started reorganizing again after the pinball machine project. So first we organize them by color and then by size, and then we're able to start designing new ideas for, you know, different kinds of robots because all of the Legos are compatible with the EV3 robotics kits. I also have memes all over my room because memes are fun and my children love making memes and it, I don't know, it's a very effective use of signage because it gets your attention and it's kind of funny. This one I made for myself, Chris Farley. Does my camera have an SD card in it? Yeah, that's for me because I forgot to put an SD card in my camera one time when I was supposed to take a picture of the whole faculty. And I had to run back down here. Long story short, I didn't make that mistake again. Here's some more memes that I made with my uh, sixth graders during our online safety unit. So it kind of gets the message across in a way that, you know, our friends from Generation Z can actually understand. Now, this section of the room by the windowsill usually looks a lot more bright and colorful and fun. It kind of looks like it does on the last day of school right now. And that's because of that. It's springtime, it's nature, but I just didn't want them, didn't want the ants getting in all my stuff. Over here on my tack board, I just keep some awesome pictures from yearbook or if I'm trying to figure out like which picture to use, I'll hang up like a couple different like versions of the same shot and then we can tell, you know, which picture will actually end up in the book. Here's another clue about the yearbook. This picture's definitely in it. This is like one of my favorite pictures from this year. Love it. Here's um, Stranger Class. This was drawn for me by Gianna C last year in study skills when I was teaching that class. And I just, I just love it. If kids make me art, I keep it in my room forever because I love art. That's what, you know, art's meant to be hung up. And if you're wondering, yes, it's Stranger Class, not Stranger Things. I'm the Salemagorgon, but only because I ask to be the Salemagorgon, not because my kids think that I'm a monster. This little sign is from our summer group last year during the summer program. We had a lot of fun. Our team was called the Salemi Squad. Here's my letter from Justin. I just need to get a jacket to put that on. That would look cool. These are my ambassador badges from Block Souls and Flipgrid. Uh, my teacher laptop. It seems really random for my laptop to be just like in this corner on top of a bookshelf, but there's a good reason for it. And that reason is that this is actually where my HDMI connection is. It allows me to connect my computer to the projector. Okay, let's moving on with the tour. Oh, also, there's, there's, they're not Christmas lights. I would like to say that they are decorative classroom lights. There was someone, I can't forget who it was, who came in here one time. I think it was a sub or something. And he's like, oh, it's Mrs. Christmas. I'm like, what? Like, am I, do I look like Mrs. Claus right now? But no, okay, because he was referring to my lights. Like, I don't know, it doesn't make me think of Christmas. It just, I don't know, creates a nice kind of lighting concept for the room. I don't really like fluorescent light so it kind of brightens things up a little bit it gives it kind of like a nice you know festive glow 
This is an important poster I have about bullying. I think it has a really important message. But it was getting kind of old. Like, I've had this poster since I taught first grade, you know, before I even worked with penguins, which I also do in addition to teaching. But I added a little thing to spice it up. A little Dürer Burger, just to, I don't know, make it more fun. This is a poster I made for my seventh grade technology class. Seventh grade tech, we do a unit on invention and the kids are required to come up with their own ideas for an innovation that they would like to make for their project. But the first few semesters I did this project, you know, everybody's topic was almost the same. It was a robot that does this, a robot that does that. And I was just trying to show them that innovation is not just robots and smartphones. See, it could even be eyebrow innovations, like feather eyebrow, Christmas tree eyebrow, whatever the shoe eyebrow is. So just, just a fun little thing um, that I uh, used to encourage my kids to come up with more creative innovations. These are my CS First certificates awarded to my 21st tech class who completed their Google CS First units. Over here I have some more memes that are made by kids about online safety when you find out you've been hacked. <laughs> Over here, this is an ancient meme. A lot of people don't know this, but memes were actually invented in the early 1800s. Like as soon as they invented cameras, people started using their cameras to take silly pictures of cats. True story. I could probably do a whole video on that. Well, definitely. Yeah, when you forgot your password again. These are great and you know, my kids make me art and a lot of it I'll keep up all year just to, you know, if I do a similar kind of lesson later in the year, I already have exemplars that are posted. Rather than, you know, creating all of the examples myself, you know, they really connect a lot better when the exemplars are from actual other students. This is an electronic hole puncher. It's fun. Just some storage containers where I have little different drawers for different kinds of chargers and plugs and things like that. Some paintings that were given to me by boys and girls in the past who were in my class. This one, I had the girl write a note for what it is. Lewis Tomlinson and Harry Styles. Together they are Larry Stylinson. I knew that I couldn't remember that at the time, so I had her write down what it was. In this bin here is where we put all of the pictures that we were working on for the yearbook. This is a selfie of Zachy T, my editor-in-chief. It's a funny one, I like that, it's in the book too. And here's one of my favorite pictures, it's also in the yearbook, of some of my sixth grade students working on a robot. But they're just so engaged and so fascinated with it, you know, and rather than, you know, looking at the directions, they just wanted to push the button and see what happens before, you know, they even learned how to use it. They just started, you know, asking questions, seeing what it could do that they could figure out, and then they got to the next step. Here's where I keep my Kindles. So I bought four Kindles so that my kids could use some different educational apps, such as Bloxels, Flipgrid, um, other kind of stuff like that, coding apps, Scratch, that kind of stuff. So when there's a anti-phone rule in effect, you know, not having their phones won't inhibit them from being able to use the apps. Here's my word wall. This is where my inner kindergarten teacher really shows, I think, because word walls, you know, are important for everybody, not just, you know, kindergarten students that are using their sight words. It's a great way to scaffold, you know, the things that we're working on in class. I mean, come on, how many kindergarten teachers do you see that have quantum computing on their word wall? Just a nice little thing. I also have pictures of my kids all over the room, just of like, you know, great times and, you know, cool projects we were working on. There's my puppy. He's cute too, the kids like that. This is a little replica of the Biltmore Mansion. I, I brought this to school because I wanted to try to make something like this on Tinkercad, but I guess I never got a chance to do that. Also, it's aspirational. I'd like to live in a castle like that someday. Cool stuff. I have like little beanie babies and stuffed animals around too. There's Boo. Just to, you know, soften things. You know, middle school is, you know, kids aren't quite, they're like, in, they're, they're tweens, you know, tween is, you know, they're not teenagers yet. They think that they're grown up and they're not, you know, they're still kids. So they still like Beanie Babies and fun things. This is my unicorn squishy. It was given to me by one of my students. It's 
some more nice little notes to just remind me that I'm the best. A little book of mindfulness for sometimes, you know, it gets stressful and might need some, uh, might need a reminder to take a deep breath and be mindful rather than stressing out about, you know, a computer that doesn't work. This is a photograph that was taken by one of my yearbook club staff members last year. Here's my siblings. I like putting pictures of my family around so they can see that like I am a human being. Here's a picture from Flipgrid Live last year when I traveled to Minneapolis to visit Flipgrid HQ and attend their Microsoft EDU presentation. It was a lot of fun. And you know, whenever kids see this, they're like, wow, it looks like a nightclub. It's like, it does. <laughs> I was, you know, fascinated with this awesome office. It was phenomenal. Over here, I have Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, which is how I start teaching any kind of robotics unit, which is like philosophically like, you know, important things to know if you're thinking about building a robot. Here's some more pictures like from my personal life to show the kids that, you know, I'm a human being. And not only that, but I work at an aquarium. So I am a part-time animal keeper. That's me with my friend Wally the Sloth. There's some of my penguin friends. Here's some more of my penguin friends and little Zuri photo bombing me because she loves to follow me around. And here's me with Munch the baby alligator because I'm also an alligator handler. So if there's ever an alligator situation in a school, I can handle it. These are just more pictures that my kids drew me. I just, I, I love their art. I love hanging it up. There's a savage potato. Savage potato was um, something that we did last year. With I did, I did something like that last, okay. Savage potato was from last year. It was a group of seventh graders that I was building video games with and that was kind of like the name of their team. It was Savage Potato. So it was like names of usernames, things like that. It was easy. Here's my seven step problem solving model. I always like to have this up in the classroom whenever someone asks like, oh, when are you gonna be finished building that robot? It's like, well, if I'm not following directions and I'm winging it, I'm gonna be using this as my directions, the seven step problem solving model. Just like we talked about in the pinball machine episodes. Cause sometimes, you know, it falls apart and then you have to start all the way back at the beginning. Over here, I have another one of my favorite quotes. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower, Steve Jobs. Here's my smirt turtle. I drew a picture for a sixth grader, Gunner. It's not his real name, it's a nickname, Gunner. And his real name is Gunner, I should say. And I, he asked me to call him Gunner on the first day of school, so that's why I called him. Looks like there's somebody at my door. Who could it be? Let's go find out. I might have to hit stop depending on who it is. Oh, it looks like it's children. Okay, let's see what they want. Hello, ladies. I'm filming right now before oh. you say anything. So, hello. We just need key 128. You need a key for room 128? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. Okay, you may enter. Okay. Is it okay if um, this video is used on YouTube? Because I know that you guys are in it. I just yeah, don't want yeah, any fine. surprises. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the key for room 128 is located over here. See my tack board where the pictures of the play are? It's hanging right on there. Okay, there you go. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Which teacher sent you? Miss Eunice. Okay, that's what I thought. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, so. That happens periodically throughout the day. Because I'm the computer lab teacher, I have keys to like all kinds of different computer labs. So if someone's trying to print something next door, they need to come get the key. You know what, let's unlock the door so when they come back, we won't have to stop again and get distracted. So I keep a magnet here to put inside the door, just so the door can stay locked at all times. So if there's ever a situation where we just have to spontaneously lock down, I, could, I don't have to go in the hallway. I can just open the door, pop that on, and the area is secure. This was, these words were from a flip grid that we did earlier in the year, hashtag one word 2019. It's like one word that, you know, is your inspiration for this year. There's a bunch of different examples here. It's a good reminder to be awesome, because everybody's awesome in here. This is just a bulletin board. I have some shortcuts for my class and some pixel art that we made with Bloxels. And some more online safety memes. This one I think is one of my favorite things I've made in the past, in the past few years. They're, these are actual safety tips from Roblox, which is like a game that the kids play. Hang on. 
Hello. Thank you very much, ladies. All right, have a great day. Enjoy your break. Thank you. Too. Thanks. Okay, back to my online safety tips. Here, so okay, these are actually online safety tips made by Roblox, which is like a real like you know game that the kids play on their phones and whatnot. You know, don't take the bait. Think twice before you click on something that looks weird. Let me skip over number two for now. Take the high road. Never underestimate the power of kindness. It feels good to be nice. A rule of thumb is to treat others how you want to be treated. You know, be nice to people online. Use your voice. You know, speak up if something weird happens online. Let's look closely at tip number two. Listen to Miss Salemi. Just because something looks real doesn't always mean it is. Not everything you read on the internet is true, and you can create pretty much anything with Photoshop. So you see what I did there? Yeah. There's my YouTube channel, my website, qlmath.com. That's where I publish the games that my students and I make with Bloxels. They're just some more little memes I made for online safety. This is all the actual terms of service for different popular apps. That's something that we talk about a lot in my unit on digital citizenship and online safety. Just a reminder not to be a bully. Never be reminded of that enough. Now here's my last row where I put some of our Lego models. I had to move these. These were over by the windowsill. But as I discussed previously, they had to be moved. So I just moved them over here. These are my photos of my yearbook club. Every year at the end of the year, as soon as I finish the yearbook with my club, I, give, I, I, I throw a huge pizza party. Everybody's invited. I order a ton of pizza, and we just celebrate all of our hard work. I make the paper chains and everything. Here's a bunch of yearbooks. Here's the prototype from last year, last year's cover. This is another cover I developed a few years ago. This one I kind of tried to make look like Instagram. So it was kind of, I did like a social media theme. It was cool. I'm really excited about this year's book though. I can't really tell you too much about that. This is the new lookbook of all the designs and fonts and typography and different kind of layouts for next year's yearbook. So I have my editor in chief set up right here. So he has a little desk in my room, a little area where he can work on yearbook stuff. This is his chair. So that's Zachy e. T, you've seen him in some of my videos before. And everyone always says, well, why is that Zach's chair? Can I sit in the red chair? Well, there's a good reason for that. Once upon a time, I got an email and the email said, hey, we're getting rid of office chairs. First come, first serve. And Zach, I ended up running into him in the hallway when I was on my way to go get the chairs. And I'm like, Zachy, come give me a hand. And he carried this one back all by himself. And because he helped me, this is his chair. I used to have his name tacked on the back, but it kind of fell off. I need to like embroider that if I really wanted it to stay. There's just a dog on a computer. So that's cool. Here, I like to keep a calendar just so, you know, the kids can see. They can visualize like, okay, if it's the end of marking period three, I'm like, okay, well here's today and here's where you go to your next class. And then we have spring break. So here's today, we have a half day. And I'll also write like important things on here. Even if I have a meeting, I'll put it on here just so they know that they can't stay after school that day because everybody wants to stay after school to work on fun stuff. Here's where I have my Raspberry Pi set up. Now this is becoming a very popular center. So this little microcomputer is the, called the Raspberry Pi. So you just plug it in to turn it on right there. There's the power and then it boots up. And then the kids see this part and they're like, oh my gosh, hacking. And they just see the script running on the screen. And I'm like, no, it's not hacking. It's, you know, just lines. Oh, here it is. It's just lines of code, you know, telling the computer what to do as it warms up. But, you know, that's what we're here for, to learn. That's what school is for. So I got to boot this up to get ready for my next class. So I have to turn the mouse on. I just have a wireless mouse and keyboard set up with it right now and a basic OS installed so that we can do things like Scratch and other programming languages to develop our programs and software. And there's also a really old version of Minecraft on here that's kind of fun, so I have some kids making houses and things. Now, that brings us to this corner of the room in this little area, which is called Space and Time. Time and space. Time and space is a concept developed from 
something called responsive classroom. And the idea of space and time is to create an area in your classroom that's kind of like the chill spot. If a kid is stressed out and can't even even, they know that they have a safe place where they can just sit and think or draw or reflect before, you know, they're able to focus again on what they're trying to focus on. Now, this area has been evolving throughout the school year. And I find myself, whenever I'm back here with students, you know, trying to talk to them about whatever they want to talk to me, we just started doodling and drawing pictures. So, you know, they know that I love art and they know that, you know, if they give me a piece of art, I'll probably have it hanging in my classroom forever. But also it's fun to draw and it makes you, you know, feel better and it, it gets your head out off of the stress in your life. It's something that I like to do a lot too. If I'm stressed out, you know, I can take a little brain break too. So that's something that I learned this year and it's helped me a lot with, you know, managing stress and whatnot. This is a Pikachu SpongeBob that was created by Hosh from my seventh grade class. And he made a stop motion animation as like a genius hour project. And I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. I'm gonna draw that picture. So I'm gonna surprise him today with this drawing if I have enough time. Or he'll just see that I started working on it and he'll be excited and I'll finish it later. Now, over here on my bookshelf. Now it started off as just a regular plain metal bookshelf. But, I don't know, it looks kind of boring and sad and cold, and, you know. So I started hanging up the pictures that I drew on the bookshelf to try to, you know, make it look a little cozier. So as I started drawing pictures, I started drawing a bunch of pictures of The Simpsons and then, you know, branched out from there with anime characters. I don't even know this dude's name. A kid asked me to draw him for her, so I did this guy too. And here's a Kermungus. Kermungus was an invention well, not a literal invention project, but it was a genius hour project during my seventh grade innovation class. I noticed there were some boys who were creating a Google Slides document that they all shared with each other where they were just posting Kermit memes. And one of them had a Kermit and something that's called Big Chungus, which is a meme that the kids are all obsessed with right now. And Big Chungus is basically just like a really fat Bugs Bunny. So I asked them, has anyone ever made a Kermit Chermungus of Kermungus. And then I did a little impromptu Photoshop lesson, uh, excuse me, a little impromptu Photoshop lesson and created this beautiful creature you see here. I drew this guy yesterday, this Kermit sipping my tea. So I was trying to tell them, you know, you know, kids are always dealing with all kinds of drama. And I said, sometimes you just gotta sit back and sip your tea, don't add to the drama. Let's see, we saw these guys. We have some more on this shelf down here. I have a few Furbies. And what's funny about the Furbies is that kids see these and like automatically freak out. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm a 90s kid. Like, how do you know what this is? They know what it is. But then they're very relieved to see that these are beanie Furbies and they're not really um, robots. Although I'd love to turn this into a robot someday, I think, but probably not because I can see that the kids are always already kind of nervous about Furbies, which I think is kind of funny. I have a bunch of books because I love books. I love to read, I'm a writer, I love books. There's books all over my classroom. Just to try to, you know, encourage, you know, reading and show them that literacy is cool. This is one of their favorite books. It's a Fortnite book, but it's kind of old. So it has like a map in it that's really old that they like to look at and compare with the new map. And, you know, it brings them together. It's something that they all have in common, it brings them together. And this book was actually from the book fair. So that's how you know it's legit. This one was from this year's book fair. So even they like to look through and compare the map and you know, see what the author says his you know, tips are. Here's another one from my favorite scientist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Shout, shout out Neil deGrasse. I hope someday you comment on my videos or tweet me. That would be so cool. I have a couple of his books in my room actually. I have um, Astrophysics for People That Are In A Hurry, but that one's on my desk. That's not really a... Uh, seventh or sixth grade text, but if a kid's really into deep space math, I'll let them know I have it and see if they want to read it. Just, you know, giving them options and making things available, making them feel safe and comfortable. That's what it's all about. I like to play classical music too. A lot of the times when we're um, in class, or even if I'm just in here, I find that it's, it's chill, it's soothing, it helps you focus. 
but this isn't just any classical music. This is a special mix that I made that's all classical music tracks from movies. So when you're doing something like build a robot or, you know, crack the code or even work on your project, you know, it feels like the moment that you're in is more epic than it is. So that's all I have to say about that. Here's another meme that my kids made. I could go, I could take all day, you know, going through every individual picture on the wall, but I will not do that today. As I see, I just hit the 30 minute mark. But one more thing before we go, before we sign off today and I have my next class. It's a message I want to send to the world. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's this. It's pronounced GIF. You know those animations you see online, those GIFs? It's pronounced GIF. GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format. You don't say Jaffics Interchange Format. They're not animated GIFs, they're GIFs. You don't say Giraffe. All right, so that's all. Uh, all I have to say about that. And this is my classroom. Thank you for watching. And have a wonderful spring break. Be good, be safe, and don't forget to recycle. Bye-bye.